Hello, and welcome to the second devlog for my unnamed voxel RPG game. I did end up getting a bit distracted the past week, but I've still got some progress to show you, so here it is. Firstly, I've made some major improvements to the coin effect. Pretty much, the coin positioning wasn't actually working before, even though I finished the last devlog implying that it was. It quickly became obvious when testing it that my coordinates were wrong, so I set about trying to fix it. Firstly, I uncovered a bug where I was setting positions per coin for the incorrect C node, which was easy to fix. I was more annoyed with myself that it ever made it into the code in the first place. I'd just like to point out as well that it's about 20 to midnight, so yeah, exciting time to be alive. But when I do that, you can see that when I set everything to start at 0, zero it actually appears in the correct position. So that's good. And if you just want to see all the debug code that I had to put in here to get this to work, well, this is this. So this is what pain looks like. Secondly, it became obvious that my cast ray positions were obviously wrong. I found this by rendering a cube as an indicator into my scene. The cube showed pretty clearly to me that my coordinates themselves were correct. It was just that my intersected ray was wrong. I was skeptical of the orthographic camera for a long time, but found a regular perspective camera did the same thing. After some frustrated digging, the reason that I ultimately found was that the camera I was querying for the ray itself was wrong. In my engine, I have a camera namespace as well as camera objects. The namespace was there originally for quick access to cameras for projects which don't use any custom composition. For projects which do use custom composition, you are able to create camera objects so you can have multiple cameras positioned around the scene at once. In my case, I had multiple compositions and had multiple cameras active at once. So ultimately what this meant was that I was querying the wrong camera for the ray query. This also highlighted to me that there was a disparity between what the camera namespace offered compared to the camera objects. You could not properly cast a ray into the scene with a camera object, so I had to add that into the engine. Unfortunately, there's a lot of duplication between these two camera systems at the moment. I worked around this by setting up the default camera to be identical to the one I was using for the effect screen. Once I had sufficiently set that up, everything sprang to life at once and worked perfectly. <gasps> it works! Hooray! Ah! Oh. Good lord! That was not, not a good thing. That took a long, long time to get working. Crikey. The thing was, like before, it almost looked right. It almost looked right. And it was only until I decided to put this cube here that I realized that it was actually completely wrong. Yeah, so I think um, I'm gonna have to fix my camera code. I was really happy about this. And with my issues in the coordinate system resolved and now confirmed working, I was free to fix the coin effect. When fixed, I thought it looked really good and it was nice to see it all working together for once. I also set the money counter widget to animate up once the effect is complete. Happy with what I had, I took the time to clean everything up. The ray casting code is now built into the engine and I also have a devoted plane object to perform intersections with. This means I can throw aside the bodged in code present at the end of the last week. I then moved on to something I had been considering for a while, a better font. I wanted something that was sort of fun while also concise enough that it could be easily read even on mobile. Two fonts I ended up settling on were Symphony and Falling Sky, where Falling Sky is used for this example. They were the two I liked the most of the 10 or so I tried. I like that font a lot and will keep it there for the meantime, as I'm planning to have more of a think about how I want the game to look soon enough. Both fonts are available for commercial use, which is great for my project. I fixed a few issues next, notably that issue where buttons didn't disappear properly when collecting coins. I also fixed the looping issue when experiencing a combat encounter. The reason is that the encounter pop-up is responsible for triggering the transition when its animation is done. It wasn't destroying itself correctly, so it was resetting the screens each frame. With that fixed, I wanted to try and make the encounter pop-up more interesting. I wanted a similar effect to how the items just sprang forth from the world. With my new effects screen, I was able to do just this, as well as adding the name of the enemy that was encountered to the pop-up. This setup was based on orthographic cameras, remember, for the sake of the coins. So as a result, the meshes look a bit flatter than I might have liked. Fixing this will actually be pretty annoying. I'd have to have two textures rendered at once, one for orthographic and another for perspective, and then blend them together. Either that or just add another render window. Neither option is really ideal, as I'd like to avoid having as many different scene passes as I possibly can. But I'll think about that later on. Really, I'd like to have the enemy animate out and then animate into the combat screen, implying that it's the same model all along. But that would be difficult, so I will save it for future. I'm still pretty pleased with the improvement, however as the animation out of the scene looks really great and adds more life to the encounter. As part of this work, I separated out the state machine I had built for the coin effect into its own classes and file. This helped me reduce the duplication as I wanted to use it for the enemy animation as well. All in all, this improved code across the two effects. 
And that's it for this week. It was fairly reduced this week as I went back to my native homeland of South Wales, not that one. <coughs> uh, potential change of scene. Uh, I'm actually back home for like a week, it turns out, so uh, I'm in my old room. It was kind of converted to a gym during the, uh, the pandemic, but we don't talk about that anymore. There were some things I needed to do. It was probably a bad idea to promise a video each week, but sometimes things get in the way. For the work I did do, I spent a while on the coordinate systems issues and didn't feel I had enough content for the week before to justify a video. I didn't want to put a video out just for the sake of meeting a deadline. I'd prefer to have some actual standards for what I post. So I think I'll use my best judgement and bear in mind that not every week I'll produce something fantastical. So I'm trying to get my work-life balance sorted out and it's great to be able to do that after so long. If you've enjoyed this video and want to follow the progress of the game, please feel free to subscribe and hit the like button as it helps me out and will hopefully give you a warm feeling that you've done a nice thing for the day. Next week I'm hoping to work on rendering icons for collectibles and adding some more effects to the exploration screen just to make it more exciting. So I hope to see you there.